Hi, I'm Jim Rosenberg. I'm the head of social media here at the World Bank, and uh, I'm really excited to be joined by Betty Mwangi, who's the general manager of financial services at Safaricom, which of course is the, the telecom mobile operator in, in Kenya. Um, Betty, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So um, I'm, I'm a bit of a mobile phone geek, and so for me to talk about a bit about M-Pesa, the mobile financial service at Safaricom is exciting. I remember a few years ago, it was five, six million people were on M-Pesa. How many people are on M-Pesa now? Well, now we have over 15 million um, subscribers on M-Pesa and uh, over 37,000 agents um, countrywide. So phenomenal growth. That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. And the agents, of course, are the, the mom and pop shops that, that exchange cash for the, the virtual value on the Correct. phone. Correct, they're cash in, cash outlets. That's yeah. great. So um, we've got lots of questions. I, we only have time for a few. First is from the US. Uh, the term inclusive innovation is a big buzzword these days. How do you, how do you view that idea of inclusive innovation and what does it mean to you? Well, I think M-Pesa is a perfect example of inclusive innovation and an inclusive innovation that has had a positive impact on, on the lives of Kenyans. So we're talking about 15 million um, Kenyans now have some access to some basic financial service. M-Pesa being a money transfer platform, but which has now evolved also into a payments platform and um, you know, is continuing to evolve into more of a financial service. Mm. So um, now a couple of questions from Kenya. Uh, first, um, what's the current um, penetration rate of M-Pesa in rural areas um, where, where formal banking services are not really accessible? Okay, I don't have the latest reports, but um, in 2006, the access, uh, rural access was at 24%, and from the last statistics in 2009, it has grown to 42%. So we expect that will continue to rise, and we should be getting the next report quite soon. Okay, so good impact. We'll, we'll yeah. look for that. Yeah. Um, uh, another question from Kenya. Uh, some say mobile money contributes to inflation in countries such as Kenya because it takes money out of mainstream financial services. What do you what do you say to that? I think to put it into perspective, I'll just respond with some statistics. Uh, currently, over 98 percent of payment transactions in Kenya are still cash. 98. 98 percent. Only two percent of those are M-Pesa. So. Cash is still king, so I, I don't think the, the statement is accurate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let's jump. Uh, let's let's jump around the globe a bit. So, a question from Mexico: um, What are some ways Safaricom helps people feel safe about using M-Pesa instead of cash? Of course, when we have a piece of cash, we we trust that we know what that is. But when something becomes virtual, it may be hard to know if it's there or not. So, how do you how do you build that trust? Well, the first thing is the system itself, or the, the service itself, is PIN protected, personal identification number protected. So as long as you're not sharing your PIN, you know that your money is safe on the phone. But it's taken a lot of customer education as well. So that, you know, for a largely unbanked society to appreciate what a PIN is, you and I understand what a PIN is because we're banked. But so continuous education, there's also a lot of innovation. We do a lot of innovation in that space. And I think critical to the whole thing is also dedicated customer support. We have a dedicated call center that just deals with any issues. One of the largest um, problems customers have is when they send money to the wrong person. So um, we have a dedicated 24-7 support center that will help you know, reversals happen in that, in that sense. So if, if you send money to the wrong phone, the wrong person, they can change that around? Yes, okay. they can, yeah. so really, assuming the person has not cashed out. So we also develop innovation around that. So that, um, for example, you can now look up, you can save your numbers on your SIM card, so you're not having to remember the telephone number you're sending money to. So there's also, that's also backed by innovation. See, this is why some people say Kenya is the Silicon Valley of, of mobile innovation. Um, so the next question from, uh, from, from India, there's a huge unbanked rural population in Asia and Africa. How, how does M-Banking become more inclusive for people living in rural areas? What does it take to make that happen? I think the critical success factor is to have as many cash in, cash out outlets as possible, what we're calling the agent outlets. In Kenya, we have 37,000. So you get the outlets for transacting as close to the people as possible, as close to the population as possible, so that they're nearly ubiquitous, so that you, you drive that whole convenience um, factor by being that close to them. Yeah. Now, of course, the, the further out you go into rural areas, uh, you have issues of, of consumer literacy 
and education, and that actually relates to a question we had from Nigeria uh, about poverty and literacy rates and how, how that can be a barrier to, um, to microfinance or access to finance uh, at the micro scale. So um, how do you overcome those challenges? Okay, in Kenya we're quite lucky because we have a quite a high literacy level. But yes, those are very real um, barriers. Um, the um, high poverty, the low literacy, it's just got to be education. Um, access also, I think, is, is right up there in terms of, of barriers. Um, a lot of um, education is critical and then have simple financial products that people can relate to. m -Pesa, the success of m is because it's so simple and easy to use. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So last question today, what's the, what's the future of, of mobile financial services in Africa? I think for us, we're just going to keep driving more and more financial services through partnerships. Um, we've currently partnered with over 25 commercial banks, so that's, that's how we see it all beginning to evolve. I did mention it started off in 2007 as a money transfer service. It's evolved into a payments platform, and now it's next step, full financial services. Well, Betty Mwangi from Safaricom working on, on M-Pesa, we're, we're keeping an eye on that. It's exciting. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, thanks, everyone online, for joining us. This is World Bank Live.